Welcome to this next episode of the Beloved Miracles Couples Project. Today, I'm reaching from Norway to Dallas, Texas, USA. Hello, Geraldine and Paul. Hi. Thank you, Hi, Thank you very much. How are you? Thank you so Thank much for having us. Geraldine and Paul have been in the profession of network marketing for 10 years, seven of those years full time. Today, they have an organization of over 50,000 distributors in 70 countries. They believe that to become successful in this profession, you have to build a mentality of abundance and work upon a solid foundation of your beliefs and thoughts. So Paul and Geraldine, where does your story begin? First of all, thank you so much for having us. This is an honor that we you thought about us. Uh, well, Paul and I have been married for 25 years. We have uh, three adult children, but they always be our kids. And uh, I'm a psychologist and Paul is an engineer. And we start uh, flirting with network marketing about 15 years ago. And we just touched a little bit about what network marketing was, but really didn't get into it. And after 10 years ago, we we were invited again to a company and we really wanted financial freedom. You know, we really wanted the time with our family and, and we, we had good jobs, uh, but we didn't have the time. So even if you have the money, but the time is so important in, in, in everything in, in your life, in our lives. So we start looking at um, network marketing as an option. And I tell you, it was, uh, it was really hard at the beginning, uh, especially for me. I'm, I'm a psychologist, so I was uh, not uh, trainable. I was not coachable because I thought, you know, I'm a psychologist. I know, I, that's, what I, that's what I do, I talk to people. And, and, I, and realizing that this is a, a beautiful industry in every way, and, and you have to learn it, and you have to overcome your fears, and you have to work on yourself a lot, was an amazing, an amazing journey. And uh, seven years ago, we started doing it in a professional way, and we leave of this, this profession, and from seven years ago, that's that's all we do. We do absolutely uh, network marketing, and we're very very proud and very happy. And and uh, we touch a lot of lives, which is I think it's uh, when you do this for a long time, and and money is not longer an issue. I tell you, money is just like the, the cherry on the top of the ice cream because it what really really matters at least for me, and I can tell for Paul too, is the transformation that we have during that process and and, and the changes that we discover in ourselves and uh, all the friends that we made and, and all the amazing life that this profession gives you. So now we do it and we love it and that's all we do. And we work together, which is the best part of it, is that allows us to, to, to live our work and our life and be we're best friends, so be 24 7 is just a great thing to be our business and our world and everything. So, yeah. Yeah, like Jolene Jer mentioned, we were looking for that time. We were looking for that freedom and with our children. Our, our family was number one. And our, our jobs, we had good positions, but they took a lot of our time. We're talking from seven in the morning until eight at night, and we had a lot of responsibilities. And we have to find a way to get out of that. And we found network marketing, but by surprise, um, we had that learning curve. <laughs> like you were talking about that dip, right? So we went from our profession and we started part-time in the evening, started working on network marketing. And we found that we had a lot to learn at the very beginning. And we struggled like everybody. We had to find a way. And uh, we were very resistant, real, very resilient. And we found that way and um over years and uh now it's, it's paid off it's really really paid off but we, now, we're still learning though yeah, okay, yeah. You, you never, you never, you never there's so much in this uh, there's the social yes. media yes. there's the people side of it um you know the technical the products there's there's so much involved and uh and we we've had the opportunity to to study it and apply it and we've we've it's, it's gone well for us Yes. Yeah, it sure has in terms of the numbers that you guys have achieved and, and the lives that you've affected, right? Geraldine, I, I have a sense that you're probably doing more psychology in this industry than you would have the opportunity to affect as many lives of in your past profession. 
Well, you know, I, I worked for many, many years as a counselor, and I work uh, most of the things that I did. I work in many organizations that empower mostly women to discover the strength and, and all the wonderful things that they had inside and to reconcile with their lives and to live an amazing life, regardless of whatever uh, their biography said. And, uh, and one of the things that I learned, which is, is actually really interesting because um, when, when I work, I work um mostly with women and men that were sexual abuse as children in, in, in my career and one of the things that i i, I noticed in ev most of the cases were that in their present lives they had a trend of violence and it was interesting to know is like why are they presenting violence in their present life well it was because that's what they knew that's what exactly what information was in their mind and what we do as counselors is we don't give advice we try to help the person to reconcile with their own biography and to empower their lives and understand that those thoughts of the serving less or those thoughts are not the thoughts that they could choose in the present moment. And, and I tell you one thing, in, in every way in our lives is the same. We reproduce in our lives what we believe we deserve. Like we have a, a hard drive that is going to manifest what we think we are. And, and one of the things that I learned is saying, well, I want to create abundance. Well, how can I create abundance if I am not an abundant person? It's the same with any 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 of the, the clients or any of the patients that we had. They want to have a meaningful life, but they didn't feel meaningful inside. And that's all of us, that we have to really feel that we deserve it, that we deserve to be rich and love and have all the beautiful things but we have to build them inside us in order to be able to manifest them as our reality so when i start doing that process on my own on reconciling with money uh, uh, realizing what were our beliefs about, about money because we had money but we didn't have time and if we didn't work very very hard we wouldn't have the money so money was just a a, 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 a recompense, a, a, an, an achievement of what we were doing. It was paying for it, but we were not attracting abundance to our life. We were only bringing money, not abundance. So we say we have to learn that process of really building ourselves and changes our thoughts about how money is earned, how abundant life is, how beautiful and powerful we are inside to bring to, 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 to manifest the same. And, and that was just a beautiful and, and, and very interesting process of our own that what we learn now we try to share it with the people that is in our organizations so when we talk to the people they say yes you have to do all the work that the industry teaches you to do you have to do the calls you have to do the follow-up you have to blah, blah, blah. everything that is absolutely incredibly need you need to do it but if you don't have that platform of of self-worth a platform belief that you can you actually can achieve it because you have the right to get it because abundance is for everybody because it's your natural birthright because it's right there for you waiting for you if you don't have that built inside it's going to be a very long process to attract it and we always say why people two different persons that one and they do exactly the same thing but one attracts a lot of very good things and the other one doesn't what is that the real thing is what they think about themselves so one of the things that we really want to empower people to do is it work in your thoughts realize how's your relationship with money realize how you feel about life how you feel about yourself do you really think you deserve to be abundant do you really believe that this is inside you and if it's not we have to transform that so we work in our in, in all our trainings in, in everything that we can share with the people is transform that before you want to transform anything so yeah in a way it is and it started with myself it started applying it in in the change in me 
So now that I, you know, do it more or less okay, because you never master anything, you're always learning, we share that with the people because that worked for us. Yeah, so totally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very well said. Yeah, that's it. We did the same thing. Yeah, you know, um, just my story, our story. She's a psychologist. I'm an engineer. I had a different mindset, and that was a different change for me. She, it wasn't much of a change for her. She was already involved in that, and and I was not. For so people who are involved in in, in um, a different mindset, you you have to adapt that. You really do to succeed. And uh, that is the number one challenge that was for me to to go into network marketing is to understand and help people and understand the psychology. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. Is that where the word uh, you mentioned it earlier? Resilience is that is that? Can you explain how you would? Uh, and, and let's imagine yourselves. Like what what I would think would be really interesting is if. However, you were first introduced. Well, let's start there. How were you introduced to network marketing? Did it kind of knock on your door, or did did you go seek it out and then engage people out of your um your desire for the information about it? Reality, my wife went looking for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's always the woman. <laughs> I know. It's, it's true. Um, I was I was focused on my job. Um, I had a lot of responsibility, and and. I was consumed there and I didn't have time to look for something else. I was trying to better myself there and move up in what I seen or had or my path. And I, I wasn't looking at other things and, and I, a whole different mindset, a whole change, a whole career change. And like I said, my wife found the network marketing. So, yes. okay. so now, now a, a, a new uh, Geraldine comes to you guys and I'm sure this has happened already, right? That you almost see yourself showing up now to the wiser you. How do you approach that, uh, Paul? And I'm curious again around this word resilience. How would you respond to their desire for this freedom and more time and all oh, this industry, but right often, oh, we're, I'm wounded from past experiences. This has not gone well before. So where do you start someone like that? How do you begin to set their mind on the right course to the level of success that you guys have accomplished? Okay, what, what I found and what I felt, and, and first of all is what I felt. I, had, I, I was getting a lot of rejection. Geraldine was doing great. Yes, yes, yes. And I said, okay, I'm going to try this. And I was getting no, no, no. And I said, come on. <laughs> and I was taking the beating. And, and I started thinking, you know, it's like sports. Um, we can send people out there. We don't have to train them. We can send them out on the mat, on the team, and, and they get beat, and they get beat, and eventually – Nobody wants to play anymore or do the sports. They, they walk away. They're frustrated. Frustration sets in. And that's where the resilience sets in, okay? That's where I have to have that support team. And first, with my psych, psych, psychological mindset, I have to be prepared. And, and I'm getting no's. And for me, why am I getting no's? What am I portraying to the people? What am I visually portraying to those people? Why they're saying no to me? Um, do I have the knowledge of the product? Uh, do I have that support experience, uh, other uplines or, or somebody who can help me out? Do I know the back office? Do I know the products? Do I know social media? Um, do, I do I know um, how to create a list? How do, do I know how to help the people create the list? So once I, I see my support, then I could transfer it to the next person on. But I could not do that until I had the majority of it set and understood. So that's how I built resilience, by reaching out. And, and you have to reach out for help. That's resilience. Doing it by yourself is not being resilient, trying to get those no's, no's, and getting beaten up and keep taking it and understanding or how can I take all these no's. It's not about that. The resilience is how to reach out and get that help and build that circle of help. And, it, and also, if, if you allow me just to add a little bit of, of what, what Paul said, one of the things that is important to understand, and, and I think this is a crucial thing for everybody in, in the profession, is that this is not an easy profession. And and people think that it's, you know, just tell a couple of friends and you're going to be okay and, and you're going to be rich very soon because, and, and it's not true. It is, and I always say to the people, if they told you it's easy, they lie to you. Don't lose your money. Like, you know, get a refund right now because you're going to pay a lot of auto ships for many months before this you know, it starts going because it's the truth. But it's like any business. But this particular uh, profession, 
it is it, most of the I think is one of the most difficult professions that are out there because we challenge with a lot of things. We challenge with the mentality of the people. We challenge with our own mentality. We challenge with you know there's this so we have to be emotionally and mentally prepared to as Paul say to the nose and and to, and to learn and to get the team and to get help now one of the great things like Paul says is that this the this professional allows you to work in, in in teams and to be able to grow together and to be able to take advantage of the support of other people which makes it a lot easier but we have to be conscious that this is not an easy profession and you have to be ready 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 for the nose the nose are the most difficult thing i tell you one thing i think most of the people leave because so many people tell me no that's it you know like they, nobody wants it everybody say no because it's our nature nobody wants to hear a no our nature as human beings is to be accepted to be a yes yes i embrace you i accept you whatever you're bringing to me i like it because i like you when somebody says no to us at the beginning at the beginning we don't know how to you know is he saying no to me or is he saying no to the to to, to the to, to, to the business or is he what is he saying no but we feel it as you're saying no to me and that hits me and that hurts people so one of the things that I work and we work with them is precisely in that in resilience part you have to be prepared for the nose because you're gonna get a lot of nose and the more nose you get the better you do like that's it our son does network marketing too he does it full time he's 22 years old and he's <laughs> like right into it and you know he comes home and he goes guess how many notes i had today <laughs> six and he's like but he's not sad or anything he because he knows that he's in a process that eventually one person say yes and then you know, one time somebody said to me, network marketing, you you, you you work, you work, you work, you work, you work, and nothing. You work, you work, you work, you work, you work, nothing. You work, you work, you work, you work, and I can't go like that. And then suddenly it started going a little bit, and, you know, like a little seed. <laughs> and it started growing and growing and growing, and then you can't stop it. Like, like you can't stop it. We are so blessed and we feel really really grateful that we have so many people in our organization we can't stop it like we could hey stop consuming like don't you know we, we don't want to stop it though no? you know to be clear <laughs> but it's just like it's, it's just the work that you do pays off after it doesn't pay you right there so you know and, and, and apart from that you build that service mindset as well yes. when you have an, a, a team of 50,000 people um, you you you've you've spent a lot of time with those people and you gave a lot of your time and it's not because you don't like it you end up liking it and you love it so you give the service and and you will see your your business just duplicate triplicate um, just grow incredibly if you give that service to them but give the correct service. Know what you're talking about. Know how to build. Know how to help the people and help them be resilient. Help them train. Um, be successful. Uh, build globally. Build locally. You need to know all of that as well to help your team out. So um, we've done. We've gone through that whole process from day one. Our first um, distributor. Yes. <laughs> I can hear that. Yeah, I can hear the engineer thinking there, and and I'd like to bring it. <laughs> I'd like to build all the systems, <laughs> right? Because Paul, as an engineer, I mean, there are many systems that would be used in in almost any type of engineering, right? Systems would be at, at play in this industry. Where did you guys first notice uh, a word like a system and systems showing up in this industry and in your experience of it? Um, just a part on my side, and uh, when at the very beginning we didn't really see the system, we were trying trial and error, trial and error. Try not to get no's more than anything. Trying to convince. We really didn't know the system yet, and we were trying to develop one. But where we really knew the system, in my opinion, it might be a little different, is when we start having more distributors saying yes, yes, yes. 
and how we have to help them and how the demand started coming on to us and to, to help. We, we had a responsibility to them. And that's when we start building systems, training systems, videos, you know, have all that package prepared for them, uh, meetings. If you didn't have the sy system in place, uh, you were lost. You, you couldn't you couldn't uh, manage it and help the people. And, and, and we also, I, I say I mentioned to you that I was not coachable at all. And, you know, I, it was a terrible thing because it cost us a lot of money and a lot of years. And I tell you, if I could say that to anyone is please really save your money and save your time, be coachable. Just learn from the people that have done it. That's it. We don't, it's nothing to, no profession is is similar but it's not this is completely a different thing right i mean it's it's not completely but this is their own it has its own uh, techniques and system and, and, and personality this this profession i don't know if that's a word for it but we have to learn a system in order to do it it's like a franchise if you go if you buy a mcdonald's a mcdonald's is going to be the same mcdonald's even if you are in berlin or you are in cancun i mean maybe a couple of things change because of you know the country a little bit of sauce here or whatever but it's going to be the same hamburger the same big mac the same it's, it's, it's almost the same this is an industry that you have to follow a system in order to make it successful and you have to learn it. and we talk about in the beginning you have to make the calls you have to make your leads you have to have your why you have to not convince people there's there's a lot of things that we have to learn and put them in place and however I want to go back a little bit if, if you if you don't have I in my experience and in my opinion of course this is just me it has to work for me if you don't have that mindset strength and built and that heart of success built or rebuilt or formed it, that system it's going to take a little bit longer of time to to get there yes and, and as for systems uh, we found that the system has to be simple otherwise it gets watered down as it goes further down and you're not directly involved that system, you have to make sure it doesn't break down. So you have to intervene, not just with your top leaders. You have to intervene further down in your distributors to ensure that that system is still functioning correctly and that's not watering down failing. So the system is just not a system. We have to make sure that it's being implemented correctly and it's being followed and everybody's understanding it all the way through your organization. Yeah, right. there's a level of nurturing, right? Almost like a farmer needs to, as you mentioned earlier, a seed, really nurture and tend to that seed uh, ongoing, I hear. Yes. Well, we all like to feel loved and cared, right? And we all like to feel that we belong to somewhere. And it's a natural, it's, not, it's a nature. So when, when we give that to the people, I mean, it, you empower the people to continue. Right, like if I nurture, I call them. I'm there. I I, I show the people that I care. It is most likely that they they stay longer in the business because sometimes people leave because they don't believe in themselves. But if you hold to them a little bit longer and you pamper them, I don't know if that's the word, but you nurture and you support as much as they allow it. Because one of the things that I always say is, do not convince anyone. If you, if you convince someone to do the business, you will carry it forever. You will be responsible. If they fail, they will blame you. If they succeed, they will not remember you. <laughs> but really, don't convince anyone. Let the people do. But there's some people that sometimes fear doesn't allow all of us to continue in something because fear is a natural emotion that we all feel in the moment of our lives all the time we all have felt fear and if somebody is there to nurture us and empower us and help us to discover that you know what maybe i'm stronger than what i thought or maybe i have a couple of things that are really really good and i didn't know and maybe i'm good to public speaking or maybe i'm good to comp compliance or products but, but i if i have someone that embraces me and power empowers me and nurtures me is most likely i'm going to be successful 
So that's why we like to go down deep in the organization. And of course, respecting leadership, of course, they're leaders that have, but we always say we are, you know, somewhere in the organization up there, never the uplines. I mean, you have to, you have to become humble. I tell you, we, I truly believe, and Paul and I have always say, the higher your rank is, the more commitment to service you have not divas and divas and network marketing oh i'm this rank and i'm this rank and don't talk to me no 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 no. your rank is higher now you serve more people and you're there for them you're there for them to help in anything that you can respecting the leadership there but to support them if you can call me anytime i'm here to support you so nurturing uh, Timothy, i think is one of the most important things in in holding a team because yeah. teams can grow but they can fall in any minute that's why you always have to be recruiting that's a reality but in order to hold the team and maintain that system along you have to have that communication that emotional and intellectual communication with your team Mm, beautiful. So to bring it a little bit full circle here, if we can, and there's a, a question I'll see if I can like inject into this question, like a double question. The, 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 the next one is, uh, you know, what, what specific advice would you have for couples like yourself, right? Couples who are building together. And then the, the, the part I'd like to add to that, if you're willing to do that, is, is specific, specific to you, Geraldine, because you had mentioned being so uncoachable. And so maybe in the answer of, uh, advice for couples building together. How did you overcome being uncoachable? You know, like what cracked that egg in a way that uh, that that you were able to overcome that? Well, I, I wasn't having results, right? And I I really tr believe about the results that this profession could give because it's it's, it's incredibly smart. You know, like the new financial education that we have, because many, many years ago we didn't have that. But now we understand that the money is in building networks, networks of whatever you want. Telecommunications are networks, franchises are networks. Everything that grows <coughs> big and, and huge is built on a net. So I really, I, I understood that and I really wanted to build a business, but I wasn't getting results because I was doing it the way that I thought it was the right way. And I was looking at people that were having results and they were doing it in certain way. So for me, it, it was just to say, I, 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 I had to become humble about I don't know anything about this and I want to know and I'm just going to open my heart and and my mind to see please teach me and I'm open to learn so um, I think that was yeah that was for me was the you know I'm spending you know every month my ownership and products and I love the products so I buy more of them but I don't know any results so I think that was that was for me the I think uh, referring to couples, uh -huh. um, uh, my advice to couples that are building, that are starting out, and ones that are having current issues is understanding each other's weaknesses and strengths. Um, one it might be stronger at systems, one might be stronger at contacting people on social media, speaking with leaders, and doing the background work. And then another one, another partner, like my wife, <laughs> <You're describing that. laughs> she, she, she's great with people. She's great up on the stage. Um, she's fantastic. She makes that connection. She has that. And I, I admit, I really don't have that. And and do I spend my time building that? And, and as a partner, you got to understand this is a business too. And and you want to be, you want to succeed. So we took a look at our strengths and weaknesses and then say, okay, I'm going to do this part of it and she's going to do that part of it and we'll develop it together. Yeah. And uh, you have to have that agreement. And on time, uh, you have your family, you have your children, you have to understand that um, some of you're going to be out there uh, making those meetings, those one-on-one, -on -one, three-way calls. And somebody has to take up that slack too with a family. And, and, we, we really have to make that um, that uh, communication and understanding. And, and one more thing, never argue about the business. You know, the business is the business, but, <clears throat> but don't argue about it. You know, it's uh, and when, when you talk, you have disagreements about the business, you talk them in, in, in from a place from love 
and understanding, but never from argument, because that will reflect in your personal life. So in your life as a couple, of course, you know, it's, it's all together in a way, but never argue about the business. Just is there disagreements, just talk it over from 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 the heart and understanding the other side and an agreement, but never, never fight, never about anything, of course, but especially not about about business. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and, and another point is belief. Uh, you know, there's couples there. The one couple is one one per, one person in the couple has a strong belief in network marketing, and this is where we should go. And the other one may not. And and I've experienced that building Red's uh, network marketing with couples, and it could be conflictive. And it's very important when a couple comes in that they both have more or less the same belief, and and they're on the same team, on the same side, with the same goal. And that's that will you will, you will succeed. And it can be really powerful. I tell you, doing this business together mm -hmm. is so incredible because you travel together, you travel to a, to a place, and then you 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 know you're working and traveling at the same time. It, it's just a, it, it just empowers your life so much. I mean it. I mean, if your couple is, is 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 your best friend, of course, right? I mean, yeah. if, we, if your That's couple, <laughs> you know, it's not like that we don't have a couple, like, right. we work, but but it's a good match. I tell you, I I wouldn't change it for nothing. I I think this is the best for me to be able to do this with Paul, and and to grow each other because we do grow each other. We tell each other, you know what? I think you should work a little bit on this, and you should work a little bit, and allow us to become better us together and we make money during that time how nice is that <laughs> yes yeah, that really is the cake and getting to eat it as well guys this has been very very insightful and you know i think there's more communicated just by even observing you looking at you and and how you even answer the questions together and as i often emphasize this idea that together we overcome you guys are a living breathing heart beating example of that just an observation. So I want to thank you for the example that you are to inspire other couples who are building together. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Very thank much. you. Thank, thank you. Much, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a very good for us. Really yeah. that. And thanks a lot for this chance to speak out to people. And uh, it's, it's been great. We really appreciate it.